and hopping here at Williams Arena. These Lynx fans ready for a winner-take-all game five between Minnesota and L.A. As we welcome you back courtside here, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. You know, we've seen intense atmospheres. We've seen these two teams play so tightly over the last couple of years. But is there a different level of nerves when it comes to a game five like this? I think there's a different level of energy. You can feel it in the arena right now. I don't think they're any more nervous than they were for games one through four, especially for game four, because that could have ended the series. The teams are ready to play, and this crowd is ready to cheer them on. Well, I, these teams couldn't have played more closely than they have over their last 12 meetings, quite literally. 908 to 908 over the last two finals and the 2017 regular season. Taking a look at the starting lineups, beginning with the visiting LA Sparks. It is Beard, Gray, Sims, Parker, and Agubake, led by Brian Agler. And for the Minnesota Lynx, they have the front court of Fowles, Brunson, and Moore in the back court of Whalen and Augustus, led by Cheryl Reeves. Fowles and Agubake will jump it up. The Lynx and the Sports, and another Game 5 is underway. L.A. took last year, 77-76, and a beautifully designed play that just didn't bear fruit at the end as Parker missed the layup. Here's Brunson, had an active Game 4. Can't start Game 5 with a bucket, and Parker looking to push. Sims to her left. Parker has it picked out of bounds from behind by Maya Moore. Both clean teams playing man-to-man -man defense, and what have we seen early? Both teams trying to get touches in the paint, being in attack mode. They both thrive when they can get touches in the paint. Here's Sims. On the drive, floats it up and off, and the rebound to Maya Moore. Couple of good looks inside on the first two possessions for L.A. Here's Brunson, another try. And we're seeing what we saw throughout the course of the first four games. Rebecca Brunson is going to be a key. She is the player that L.A. helps off of to give a double team towards Sylvia Fowles. She had 18 points, 13 rebounds in the game four win. Shot clock is at seven. Gray on the drive, scoops it up and off, fouls the rebound. She worked on more. Here's Sims cutting through traffic. Parker in rhythm of three is off. And more the rebound. LA has missed their first four from the floor as Maya Moore just went backboard. Yeah, Moore tossed that cavalierly in the backcourt to Will, and in Minnesota turns it over. Two turnovers in a row now for Minnesota and LA. When they've been effective, they've done a great job defensively getting deflections. And, and getting the basketball and going the other way. L.A. Sparks led the WNBA in turnovers forced and points off of turnovers. This season, every team who's won the points off of turnover battle has won the contest. Regular season and finals. Seven to shoot. Beard trying to hook inside. Through the left. Whalen, the lob. Fouls the shovel. Brunson can't finish, it volleys around. Agrubake feisty underneath, and a foul, the bucket will not count. Two teams that know each other so well. They know what each, their opponent is going to be running, and, and that's going to could make for some ugly basketball here. Nice passing, relentless nature of Minnesota. That's what we saw in game four, all over the glass. 21 to five was a second chance points advantage for Minnesota in game four. It was the most second chance points that LA gave up in any game this season. 16 offensive rebounds for Minnesota in that game. Shot clock at five, Whalen draws two. Bronson nearly traveled, now spins, floats, and hits. Four-nothing start for Minnesota. Sims alone, a three, off the mark, long rebound Augustus. And L.A. has missed their first five shots. Whalen will take, you back. A 
Sims and Gray is going to be the key to this game tonight. It's been the key for this for that team for a long, long time. Let's not forget, I know Parker's a hell of a player. I know Gumake. I get all that. But it's these two that control this thing. So we got to get up in our pick and roll defense. Things you guys got to be up there. Right? I don't want to find out about Gray. Let's not look at the fire lit. Ryan, as much as it pains me to say it in here, we know championships are won by guards, simply. <laughs> and because they control the basketball, they handle the basketball, the ball is in their hands for much of the game as you see Sims getting the dribble penetration. And throws it away. Out of the timeout. And now Moore is fouled on the other end by either Beard or Parker. It's Elena Beard who will get hit with it. And you see that situation with Sims. We talked with Brian Agler before the game about the trust level he has with Odyssey Sims. And he said, look, of course, there's some question marks because I've only had her a year. I've never had her in this spot before, but she has to play aggressive. That's when she's at her best. Remember, she's the only starter in these finals who wasn't playing in the finals a season ago. Good touch pass from Gray, and Parker puts in LA's first bucket. That's where Candace Parker thrives, in the open floor. And she's not been very good from the three-point line throughout the course of the finals. Now three of 18 from three. But she can really score inside. Augustus, no. Fouls on the offensive glass. And then throws it away, but Beard is going to lose it back to Minnesota. Back to Parker in transition. Candace Parker at 6-4 runs like a smaller player. When she gets the ball, she can handle and just beats the other bigs down the floor. This is really where Candace Parker thrives. That was one of the things Elena Beard pointed out to us as well. How important it was for Parker to be in control as Moore lays it in on the back door. Making L.A. pay for the overplay. We go back door, and they were able to do that successfully in game four as well. That was something you highlighted for us in the pregame show. Here's Sims with Agumake on the roll, knocked out of bounds off of Minnesota. Eight to shoot for L.A. We asked Cheryl Reeve to fill in the blank. The Minnesota Lynx will win the title tonight if blank happens. She said, defend and rebound at a high level. So far in this first quarter, Minnesota has. You love that fill in the blank game. I miss Mad Lips. That's really what it comes down to. <laughs> Gray has to heave it up. Nearly brought rain, did scrape the rim, but another strong defensive possession for Minnesota. Whalen maybe got away with a carry, but then lost it anyway. And here comes Parker, three on one. Parker the no-look, the touch pass back from Gray to Parker for two. The more times L.A. can get that, the more successful they will be. Candace Parker, 6-4 forward, but she is another ball handler on the floor for the Sparks. He had 28 points, 12 rebounds, en route to the MVP of last year's finals in that Game 5 performance. And now a foul away from the ball against Minnesota as the Lynx turn it over. And this is where Candace Parker is different from most forwards in the league, whether it's off the steal or off a defensive board. She doesn't have to find an outlet. She is the outlet. She can take the ball and push the pace for her team. That's already four turnovers for Minnesota through the first half of this first quarter. Essence Carson in. Nice look from Parker. And now a three-second violation against L.A. As it looked like Gray or Carson got caught in the paint. So Sims, Gray, Abumake, Carson, and Parker are the five for L.A. Starting lineup remains intact for Minnesota. Nice look to Brunson, who finishes. Again, that's because Candace Parker is shading over towards Sylvia Fowle. So once again, Brunson open. And six early points for Rebecca Brunson. Deflection from Minnesota. Parker finds a Bouvake who puts it in. Just her third bucket outside the paint of this series. More the pocket pass. Brunson, not that time, but was fouled. And Rebecca Brunson will shoot two as she has the kind of activity early that she had in the game four win. And these are the things that are going to be there. You see Candace Parker, where are her eyes? She's looking around on the floor. 
trying to help, help. Her, her idea is to be on health defense. Rebecca Brunson comes in from the weak side and gets the score. We've seen that throughout the course of these finals, Ryan. Well, if it's going to keep happening the way it has so far in this first quarter where Brunson is effective on the offense, but does Parker have to adjust? Yeah, absolutely. She has to, to stop thinking so much help side defense, find Brunson initially, and then perhaps wait until Sylvia Fowles catches the ball before she comes over to help. Rebecca Brunson with eight points, LA with just six. It's a 13-6 Minnesota lead. Brunson can become the first player ever to win five titles if Minnesota wins it tonight. Moore comes up with a steal, pushing ahead to the rim, got it to go. Minnesota dictating early, a nine-point lead. Timeout LA. Well, Maya Moore had a couple of huge defensive plays at the end of game four. A big one early here in game five. Her links lead by nine. Welcome back to Minnesota where the Lynx lead by nine, much because of Rebecca Brunson coming off a terrific 18-point, 13-rebound performance in game four. She has had the attack mindset again, not simply settling for jumpers, but finding herself in the paint for finishes. If you want to leave me fine, I'm going to make you pay. For a little more on the veteran, let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, Zedner is right at 35 years old. Rebecca Brunson, one of the oldest players in the league with four championships. She said, right now, it's hard. Physically, it's hard to rebound from game to game. But she said, I feel like I am willing my team. She believes that as she goes, her team will go. And she is willing them with every bit of energy on the board, scoring, taking whatever's available. And she has averaged 15 points in their wins, just four in their losses. She has eight so far tonight, Holly, and is indeed the third oldest player in the WNBA. I love the quote from Cheryl Reed before game four. She said, we are at our best when Rebecca Brunson is doing Rebecca Brunson-like things. And when Maya Moore is doing Maya Moore-like things, Minnesota's pretty good as well. L.A. trying to find some answers. They missed a couple of bunnies on their first few possessions and have not gotten a lot of good looks since. Sims to Parker, four to shoot. Parker trying to create, finds Beard for two. And a big shot there from L.A. just to try and stem the top. L.A. is at its best offensively in the half court when they are moving and cutting and having half spacing. And that time they had all of those things. Here's Moore. Abubake came with the help. Moore floats away and hits. Eight early points from Maya Moore. Parker will take. No. That's a setup. That's a settle. That's a shot that L.A. can get much later in the possession. Montgomery can't connect. Parker, the rebound. That was something that China Robinson detailed for us before the game. As Agumake catches, finishes, plus the foul on the home run pass from Parker. Candace Parker with a spectacular quarterback-like pass. Eyes up the whole time. Look at this. Over Renee Montgomery, perfectly placed right into the paw of Neko Gumake, and she finishes with contact. Oh, that's your 6 4 forward making that pass. Neko Gumake has really taken a beating. These finals going up against Sylvia Fowles in the post, as you see Essence Carson. Candace Parker checking out for L.A. Neck actually told Holly this is the most physical basketball she has ever been associated with. Well, she's going against a much bigger and stronger Sylvia Files, and that's not an easy task. Natasha Howard in for Minnesota with Montgomery Perkins, Fowles, and Augustus. Moore gets a breather. Agumake gets the steal and is fouled by Montgomery as Sims was blasting forward. And now L.A. wants to check whether or not that should be a clear path foul. Hey, shop WNBAstore.com now to represent the L.A. Sparks and the Minnesota Lynx in the WNBA Finals. And be sure to visit either team.
clinches to score your championship gear. WNBAstore.com, one store every team. They forgot the if. Yeah. If either team, or when either team. Are you suggesting this could be a, a 12 overtime game that goes in perfect? <laughs> yes, they forgot the when. Oh, yes. They forgot the when. I wouldn't mind a 12 overtime game. No, it's not the way these teams play. Agurda K connects. So after two buckets outside the paint all finals, NECA has two already in this first quarter. It's a six-point game. Agumake with seven in the quarter. Top bucket ten. And that's another steal for LA. Six turnover for the Lynx. Lavender flashed open for a second in the paint. Here's Sims, plenty of time to operate for L.A. Sims breaking down Augustus and got the whistle. We know Odyssey Sims wants to go left to her strong hand. I don't know how many possessions, though, L.A. wants to end with Odyssey Sims just trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. For a little more on Simone Augustus, let's check in with Holly. Is really fighting through some things. She had her knee drained of 55 cc's of fluid, according to her head coach Cheryl Reed, yesterday. And here she is playing in game five of the finals. She had both knees drained just around Labor Day. She's fought through that through the playoffs, but pulled her up, said, No, you're on the side watching. So take it easy. 7 0 LA run. They are within four. Shot clock at 10. Into foul. She's surrounded and fouled. Sylvia Fowles' first field goal attempt will not even be recorded and she'll get free throw attempts instead. This is something we've consistently seen throughout the course of this series. When Jantel Lavender comes in and defends Sylvia Fowles, Minnesota looks to exploit that because Lavender can get caught on Fowles' back, whereas Agumike is a little more active with her feet getting around to knock away entry passes. Now Fowles has actually struggled from the line in this series. Entering this game, just 8 of 14 before that make, so now obviously 9 of 15, but she's a very good free throw shooter, 77% on the season. Lynx as a team have struggled from the line. As Fowles gets the wall in the second, they have not shot over 70% in any of the seven playoff games yet this postseason. Here driving, forcing, and not hitting. Probably not the best decision from Beard, although she had a full head of steam. Here's Moore back into the game with a flash, a shovel. Fouls, gathers, and throws it away. Turnover number seven for Minnesota this quarter. Gray weaving and finishing, plus executing the two for one. And one of the things you saw there is Sylvia, uh, Simone Augustus, ineffective defensively. She is absolutely not moving the way we saw her move in the earlier part of this series. So you wonder if Cheryl Reeves gonna have to make a tough decision there when it comes to minutes and one of her trusty veterans. Four point game, Minnesota is led by as many as 11 in this quarter. Four second difference, game and shot clock. Whalen will fire, no. Five seconds to operate for LA. Ray gets it up the floor. Parker will take. from Candace Parker and a strong finish from the LA Sparks at the end of this first quarter. LA has been most effective when Candace Parker has gotten touches and touches in the open floor. Behind the back around five. And moments ago, Holly Rowe caught up with Sparks head coach Brian Ackler. Well, Coach Ackler, when Candace Parker is running the floor off a of break, getting the basketball like that, how does that impact your team? Well, she's extremely important for us because she's so versatile. You know, she can score and she can facilitate. But it all begins by getting stops. You know, we did, we weren't doing that early in the game. And we were a little bit passive on the offensive end. So I'm hoping this will generate some energy for us. Your defense did change. You got more deflections and you got some 50-50 balls there. How did you feel that energy change? That's important for us. The intangible things are going to be the difference in the game. Thank you, Coach. Ryan, one thing, when you want more energy, you pick up in full court defense. Often that's a way to get your team energized on that end of the floor. One thing Sims will have to be careful with in regards to that, she has two fouls as Augustus floats it home. Now, they did take a long time in the break reviewing that bucket from Candace Parker, whether or not it was good or not at the buzzer. 
As you can tell from our scoreboard, it obviously stood. So a 13-4 run for LA ended the quarter as Minnesota scores the first two of the second and now forces a turnover. Augustus finds fouls. Wide open Perkins. Off the mark. Hasn't hit a three yet in this series is more battled, but Sims wins the rebound. Parker finds the open player. It's Lavender, who also has not connected from three in this series. I think Parker needs a touch almost every time down the floor for uh, offensively for LA though. I don't know how much you can afford to have on the bench in this game. So far, Brian Adler hasn't, but for a few seconds. Shot clock inside of 10. Gray wants a screen, gets it from Lavender. Wasn't a good one. Perkins fought over it. Three to shoot. Lavender on the drive. Plays it in as nobody came over to commit to help. Something we don't see very often from Jantel Lavender. She's usually a face-up jumper kind of post player. She's pick and pop. Pick and pop, yes. Or sometimes just pop. <laughs> Lavender making Gray hit the deck. Now Sims came with the help, but left Moore, who is deadly from there and couldn't hit. Here comes Sims, charging forward. There's a touch for Parker, backing in, Moore foul, and sold back. And Candace Parker has a smile on her face as the foul is called. Candace Parker has the size advantage against Maya Moore, posting her up. <laughs> there is nothing there. Really sold this big time. Candace Parker did not lower the shoulder. She did not lean in. To the naked eye, it didn't look like anything. And now a technical fence and on Brian Adler. That Subal made the call on one end and then got an earful from Brian Adler and eventually gave him a tee. Augustus catches in. But Brian Adler obviously had a right to be upset on what was an inaccurate call. Especially because throughout the course of the finals, we've seen Candace Parker get into foul trouble and have to play with fouls in the first half. And while that's only her first, he doesn't want her to pick up any unwarranted fouls. It's been a very well-officiated finals in general. Augustus on the curl, banks it up too strong, Brunson, no, Augustus, yes! And a big swing there from the offensive foul to the tee to the second chance points for Minnesota. Beard on the move. Sims the drive, the kick, Beard's jumper, off. Good tap back from Agumake. Sims floater is denied by Fouts. And here comes Whalen. Second block for Sylvia Fouts. Moore slips right around Beard and breaks it in. Lead is back to seven for Minnesota. And Brunson is reasonably upset as well as Got your back, good job. Was she pointing? Did that did it hit Candace's Parker foot? I dribble think. off her own foot. Yeah. yeah, I believe Candace just dribbled it off her own foot. And Brunson got hit with the personal instead. Parker's three <laughs> off the mark. Aguma came back tapped to the right to Brunson. LA has missed their first seven from deep. It made this a two-point game with the basketball, but five straight from Minnesota, who led by 11 at one point in the first. Whale and a bomb. No, long board, and there's Brunson again. Moore will take off. And this box out from the Bumake on Fettis. Lob inside. Parker somehow gathered and got the whistle on an ambitious delivery from Odyssey Sims. 
see Candace Parker asking Elena Beard if she's all right as her teammates help her to her feet. Candace Parker, this series, while she is a three-point shooter, only shooting 18% from the three-point line. Where she's effective and why she's at the line is when she can get inside, in particular, putting the ball on the floor and putting pressure on the defense. Six points, four rebounds, three assists for Parker. Now, we've noticed in these finals, Rebecca, this particular series, Parker has looked visibly more spry and has made a much clearer impact on the game when she has had more than one day of rest. We saw it in game one, game three, and now so far in game five. This is a player throughout the course of her career has battled through a variety of injuries. And, you know, anyone who's played the game knows when you have a little more rest and your body feels good, you are going to perform better. And I think that's been the case the course of the finals for Parker. Agumike got a hand on it, but Minnesota controls as Parker goes one for two. Six minutes to go in the second quarter. Augustus switched on Parker as Brunson fell. Now Agumike comes over the top, knocks it away, still five to shoot. More patient, the swing, no. Six, Gray on the drive. Oh, couldn't get it to go with the left hand. Faded a little further away from the hoop. Here's Alexis Jones, the rookie. She threw it away. Williams, the pull-up is good. And Cheryl Reed will take a timeout as Williams cashes in in transition. A four-point contest. Second quarter action of a do-or-die game five in Minneapolis. And these two foes... Baseline jump shots. So when so when we draw, we've done our job. And we kick, and then the people on the baseline, no hesitation, y'all shoot it. Candace Parker talking about draw and kick, dribble, penetrate, and kick. And we had a conversation with Brian Agler at Shoot Around this morning. He said at every level of basketball, youth basketball to the NBA. When you get a touch in the paint and then kick out, the shooting percentage goes way up. It's so effective because then you get a mismatch and an easier look. More block from behind by Carson. Gets it back. Can't finish. Parker the rebound. Take it easy. Take it easy. Brian Adler yelling, take it easy. Williams into the paint. Bounce to Agumake. She can't finish. And the rebound caroms out to Moore. It wasn't a baseline shot, but it was a dribble penetrate and a little drop off. Agumake has seven, Parker has seven, eight for Brunson, ten for Moore, just two for Sylvia Fowles. Augustus just forced it up there. Great D from Agumake, and here comes Parker. Already with six rebounds. Williams, the drive, the pull up, can't stick the landing. Augustus thinking about going one-on-one -on, -one on Agumake. Trying to cross her over. Can't finish. And L.A. will live with that all day. Right now, Minnesota with a much smaller lineup. Maya Moore at the four. That's what puts Agumake on, on Augustus. Great effort by Whalen diving on the floor for the loose ball. And it'll be a jump between Raquana Williams and Lindsey Whalen. Now, the MVPs so far tonight Here's the production as Sylvia Fowles checks back in. Abumake, Parker, Moore, and Fowles all have won league MVPs. Parker, Moore, and Fowles all have won finals MVPs. Fowles has done it on the glass. She has not yet gotten her opportunities offensively. But the defensive attention Fowles has gotten has given opportunities to Rebecca Brunson for Minnesota. Whalen, 5'9", Williams, 5'7". This is something Cheryl Reeve worked on after she didn't like how her team handled jumps in game four. And this one, they win. And Whalen is harassed and fouled by Raquana Williams. And Lindsey Whalen trying to fire up her squad. Telling Maya Moore, let's go, and getting right in her face to show a little emotion. 
you see Lindsay Whale and just, you saw the jump ball at one end, diving on the loose floor, and no one has command of this crowd more than Lindsay Whale, who played her college basketball in this arena. It was a star here, it's fouls, doesn't get the roll, Brooks in, can't put it in, another chance for Sylvia, who does it, and once again, Brooks in, and fouls, just mammoths on the offensive glass. An 8-1 edge in offensive rebounding for Minnesota. Parker on the roll to the rim, puts it home. So effective. When, they, when L.A. gets pick and rolls with either Chelsea Gray and Candace Parker, or Odyssey Sims and Candace Parker, with Parker going to the rim. Here's Moore, now on Beer. Here comes Sims with the help. There it is alone. Three, rebound kept alive. Brunson to fouls. What else is new? Augustus will take. An 11 0 edge, second chance points for Minnesota. Arubakin forced it. Loose ball. Link Savage. And Moore is fouled by Arubakin. Well, the Minnesota Lynx doing all the little things. Second chance opportunities created by Brunson and Fowles. The emotion after 50-50 balls. Lindsey Whalen has been winning. And Simone Augustus getting in on the act as the Lynx have been able to fend off the Sparks so far in this first half. Really crushing them in second chance points. 11-0 the edge as Candace Parker gets a breather for LA. This continues the theme from game four, combining games four and five. 25 to eight is the offensive rebound advantage for Minnesota. Fouls, draws two, spins in, and finishes. It's like she can sense that Chantel Lavender's on her and she is going to try to score over her. Lavender was not able to handle Griner in the semifinals, and she just has not been able to handle fouls here in the finals. Obviously a tough assignment. Yeah, as a foul inside is called against Sylvia Fowles, her first. Cheryl Reeve told us she did not show her team any footage of last year's Game 5. Didn't even reference game five last year, other than to say jump balls were a factor. Gray alone gets the roll. And right now with Candace Parker getting some rest on the bench, Chelsea Gray is going to be the player that LA will look to create things on the offensive end of the floor. Four points for Gray. Lavender that time tried to come over the top and is called for the whistle. And that'll be the third team foul. So the first in the last two minutes against L.A. The next one will put them over the limit. You know, one more thing on not showing the team game five, Cheryl Reef says, she said, look, it's incredibly painful to watch. And I want them in a good frame of mind. Yep. Fouls draws a swarm, four to shoot. Whalen on the move with two to shoot. Pops it in. Here is Gray on the drive, gets denied by Moore. Augustus the spin, the floater. No, another offensive rebound for fouls, and the finish. three missed it la 0 of eight from deep as a groomake on the second chance earns her way to the line coming up with the wmba halftime report presented by state farm holly Rowe looks at how two stars have been intertwined for many years and will have the best sounds from the first half fouls and parker intertwined 
It's a really interesting story, their roots, so you're going to have to stay tuned for halftime because nobody tells it better than Holly. Come on, come on, come on. As Parker checks back in. Parker's been effective. 9.7 rebounds, 3 assists. Fouls has 10 rebounds and 8 points. As Agumake goes 1 for 2, rebound batted around and won by L.A. 2 for 1 opportunity if they hurry, but Sim seems content to make sure it's a good one. Lob inside, Parker puts it down, plus the foul, as Brunson came over. Candace Parker just back into the game, once again effective, going towards the basket, just slips right behind, fouls, perfect pass. Brunson over late for the foul, but beautifully delivered, beautifully finished by Candace Parker. Third foul on Brunson. And Parker completes the three-point play. She has 12 points, seven rebounds, three assists. Also executed the two for one. As well, they should get another possession here as they look to climb out of this hole. Seven-point Minnesota lead. Whalen is fouled by Sims. And he lays over the limit, so that's going to send Minnesota the line. And that's number three on Odyssey Sims, who probably got a little too aggressive there. Well, that's what Odyssey Sims does, is she gets up in your space as the on-ball defender. And she's been effective doing that at times in this series, and then at other times, Lindsey Whalen has used her veteran savvy to, to use it against her. We talked about Whalen, who's a star here at the board at the University of Minnesota. And we are talking to today about if she's taken any time to reflect on how this will be her final game ever in this arena. And she said, well, no, because I never thought I was going to play one here again. Lynx has been forced here because of renovations to the Target Center and have made it their home. But she said the thing that she thinks about coming in here is those summer practices and workouts and the smell and the sweat and how she spent so much time Bonding with their teammates and becoming a better player in this gym. One of the things that's interesting about it, former players, when you go back to the university and the gym where you played, it's the smell more than anything that takes you back to those moments that you were just describing. Minnesota scored on its last six possessions. They lead by nine in a do-or-die game five. Five seconds left in the half. Three seconds left. What a find for Parker as Agumake finishes plus the foul. Sylvia Fowles right now frustrated with her teammate because she picks up another foul. How many times has L.A. been able to have success drawing the defense out and then quickly going back? Oh, it's because she didn't know that the back screen came from Chelsea Gray. Now that's Gia Perkins' responsibility to let Fowles know the back screen is there and then to help off until she can recover. And Rubike finishes the three-point play. 2.3 to operate. Whalen on the move will fire. And that will do it. An exciting first half of basketball. The Lynx built an 11 point lead. LA cut it to two. Minnesota swung back. This on the glass overall. A plus seven in offensive rebounding, a plus 10 in second chance points, and an edge in the paint for Minnesota. Now, LA got a terrific effort from Candace Parker in that first half. 12 points, 7 rebounds, 4 assists. She scored her assisted on 20 of the Sparks' 35 points, and you think that she'll very much be a part of the blueprint if they're going to win this game and have a comeback in the second half. Yeah, without question, Candace Parker needs to have the basketball in her hands, making decisions. But, you know, and, and it's most effective when the LA gets a stop at the defensive end. She gets the board and can come down and lead transition the other way. Now, one thing I wanted to ask you about, Minnesota's bench was incredibly ineffective in their limited minutes in that first half. They're the oldest team in the league. Could fatigue play a factor for their starters with heavy minutes down the stretch of this game? I think the key will be if they find themselves in a deficit and really have to expend energy to make a comeback, that's where you might feel it. Augustus will increase the lead to begin the third. Simone Augustus, after having her knee drained yesterday, as Holly detailed for you, has 10 points. That pass is denied by Brunson. 
Candace Parker telling Odyssey Sims, bounce pass. That's, that's a situation where you need a bounce pass. It's easier for Brunson to come around the top than slide around the bottom. Rumake and Parker each in double figures. No other member of the Sparks with more than four as Brunson denies Parker. Beard saves, two to shoot. Gray has to put it up and did not. Did not get it off in time. How about 6-2 Rebecca Brunson sending a message. You know Candace Parker is going to be trying to take it in the lane. She gets a piece of that beautiful block. It's not just the block, though. It's all right. I'm here to defend my home paint. Playing with three fouls is Brunson. Aggressive still and a big block there. Beard hit the deck. Whalen did as well. And that is going to be a blocking foul against L.A. as Whalen works her way to the stroke. Did Beard hit the deck because one of her teammates was trying to get through to the defend? It, it might have been, yeah. Her teammate pushed her over. And for Agumake, it's her second. It's always a great sign for Minnesota when Lindsey Whalen has the attack mentality. We've seen that a few times here in this game where she's passed up a perimeter shot so she can drive inside. She has seven points, four assists. We asked Cheryl Reed for an X factor in this game, and she said, we need way to score some, meaning Lindsey Whalen, who orchestrated beautifully in game four, didn't necessarily score, but so far she has put in the necessary points. Eight of them with another free throw coming. And Minnesota is now 9 of 9 from the line as a team. And after shooting it at just 63% all postseason. In the regular season, they did shoot it at 79%. So this is more their norm. Beard on the drive, denied by fouls. She lost it. Shot clock did reset as Beard and Whaling get tied up. And we'll have our second jump ball tonight. How about Sylvia Files continuing to protect the paint? Minnesota, the past two possessions. Rebecca Blunson block. Now you have a Sylvia Files block. That makes the offensive team more reluctant to go in there, especially smaller guards when they know the help side's going to be there. You still play crisscross, jump, jump, don't you? Oh, yeah. You hear it when we go on our jobs and our DJ for us. That's right. Parker too high off the window, couldn't put it on. Whalen, full head of steam. Try to pick her way through the traffic. Augustus, too strong, rebound, knocked into the arms of Gray, and a foul that'll stay right here. Agumake and Parker went up in traffic with Sylvia Foul. And a loose ball foul called against Los Angeles. L.A. knows they have to get their body on Rebecca Brunson and Sylvia Fowles. And how is that a foul on anybody? I don't think it's a foul on anybody, but if it's foul on somebody, you think it'd be fouls. Parker might have gotten away with some contact there. Now Fowles will kick it back out. More! Largest lead of the game for the Lynx. It's 13. Sims will take. Can't hit. LA still seeking their first three of the game. The way Minnesota is rotating defensively, LA is going to have to make some of those threes, some of those open threes, Ryan. Fouls out of the double. Not a good look. Brunson was there, threw it away. But how about this dish from Lindsey Whalen and Maya Moore? Lindsey Whalen doesn't often get too fancy, but when she does, her teammates like to call her Wheezy. That was a Wheezy pass right here, and Maya Moore, she knows after that kind of pass, I better make my shot. That's off of the foot of Gray. It'll stay with Minnesota. Nine to shoot. The Lynx lost game five on their home floor a year ago in Target Center. On a last second put back from Neko Gumake. Brunson blocked by Parker, leading the break. Nice down court feed, and Sims will put it in. Saw a tired Sylvia Fowles and a tired Maya Moore retreating that time defensively. And you wonder, will fatigue at any point play a factor for these starters who have built more of a cushion? Pass 
denied as the entry was intended for more. Here's Sims. The floater is off, but she was pushed from behind. And two free throws coming for Odyssey Sims as L.A. looks to add to their 14-2 fast break point lead. And that's because of turnovers. I mean, that's where L.A. thrives is when Minnesota turns the ball over. Minnesota thrives when they get their second chance opportunities. Sims, an excellent free throw shooter. It's the first. Join us for our NBA preseason tip-off game, the Sacramento Kings versus the Los Angeles Lakers from Las Vegas, Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. This is what happens when we no longer have a slate of WNBA games. We're looking forward to the NBA preseason. That's right. Are you calling that game? I am calling that game. Without me. Doris Burke will be hanging out. Oh, well, there you go. Congrats to DB, now full-time NBA analyst for us. You know she's watching tonight. And a whistle away from the ball against L.A. And if that's Neko Gumake, that's her fourth. And it is. So Gumake has gotten hit with three personals in the first three minutes of this third quarter. She continues to try to battle and fight against Sylvia Fowles. What a rebound by Rebecca Brunson! And Gumake had to be careful initially and then the rebound knowing she's playing with four. Gray forced it up, but in. And L.A. could really use Gray getting going. Nine-point game, Minnesota leads. Gray is very capable offensive scorer. Led the WNBA in three-point field goal percentage this season. Here is Whalen. Switch with the Gumake. Shot clock at seven. Parker steals the pass. And now Moore will foul Parker in transition to prevent the opportunity because as Rebecca has detailed, that is when LA's offense is at their best. Just the first foul on Moore and the second team foul against Minnesota. Is there any way for LA to keep Minnesota from dominating this battle on the glass this has to be a concerted effort of getting bodies on people and it might mean your guards have to get in there too because oftentimes in minnesota they're not going up and grabbing the rebound right away it becomes like a little bit of a tip drill that's where they have the advantage sylvia fouls the biggest player on the floor but the guards might need to mix it up more for la moore gets a breather for minnesota Sims the spin, can't finish, but is fouled, and Odyssey Sims works her way back to the strike. Is that following Renee Montgomery or Sylvia Fowles? That's on Fowles, her third personal. That was a silly reach, and as a post player, you do not want to get a foul reaching in. If you're going for the block up top, that's one thing, but you don't want to get it on the reach in. And remember that sound we played for you earlier from Cheryl Reeve before the game, talking about how, with all due respect to Candace Parker and Neka Gumake, it's about Sims and Gray, and that's who they have to stop. I think she really likes her defensive matchup with Fowles and Brunson on Gumake and Parker. I think she knows that she might be a little vulnerable in terms of dribble penetration from, her, from LA's guards. Sims has shown that a couple of times in his third. The lead is down to seven. A cutting Perkins can't finish, but a blocking foul against L.A. When and Sylvia it's against Odyssey Sims, and that will be her fourth. Candace Parker just fighting and fighting and trying to prevent Sylvia Fowles from doing much. And we've seen this throughout the course of the series. If Fowles draws defensive cover. attention. You turn. Come on now. Keep playing. If Minnesota, when Minnesota gets cutters through the right lane, they have success. We saw that a lot in game four. So now, Fowles is three. Brunson is three. For L.A., Agumake and Sims both with four fouls. 
and both still on the floor. As Brian Agler has shown all postseason long, he trusts his players to play with fouls. All postseason, all regular season. This is not something new for the L.A. players to be on the floor in foul trouble. Two points from Gia Perkins, the first bench points of the night for the Lynx. Gray gives it up. Great look to Parker. And Chelsea Gray has had some gorgeous dimes to Candace Parker. They're so effective in the pick and roll because Gray has size and can see over the defender and deliver to Parker, who has size. Six points, five assists for Gray. Parker has 14 points, eight rebounds, five assists. At her first career triple double in the regular season, as Montgomery can't connect. Beer, great job. There's a game rebounding to help secure for LA. Here's Gray, the crossover, gives it up. And he's on to operate, and Parker just had it taken away by Brunson. Now Beard takes it right back for LA. Gray on the move, looks off the pass, and scoops it in with the left hand. Chelsea Gray is a dangerous player on the offensive end, can get her team going, can score in bunches. It's a five-point game. Augustus lost it out of bounds, L.A. basketball. A lead that had swelled to 12 is down to five, thanks in large part to Chelsea Gray. Chelsea Gray with two of her eight points. Big guard finishes inside. Pretty play. Lead the spark 51 46. Well, Chelsea Gray being LA back right now, it is a miracle that she's even playing in the WNBA. Her junior year of college, she dislocated her kneecap. Her senior year of college, she fractured her kneecap and it had to be replaced with a piece of bone out of her hip. The Connecticut Sun took a chance on drafting her and she was out of basketball for almost three straight years. But the hometown native in LA. Brian Agler said, I finally picked her up because she killed us every time we played against her. Now she's leading them in the finals. Making a nice pass to Parker. It last hit her leg, though. Knocked out of bounds. Remember, it was Chelsea Gray who hit the game winner of game one. The step back jumper, a difficult look, but ice in her veins, a career high 27 points to give L.A. the win in game one. And it's a remarkable story that Holly just told about Gray and her persistence as Montgomery wraps in for two. How much confidence does Chelsea Gray's teammates have in her? That last play, Candace Parker told Brian Agler, run it for Chelsea Gray. Sims, pass knocked away. Fouls on the steal. Minnesota on the move. Montgomery gives it up. Fouls, patient. Perkins. Four straight out of the timeout for Minnesota. How good has Minnesota been playing around Sylvia Files in this game, whether cutting to the basket or spotting up on the perimeter? Odyssey Sims was trying to call the timeout for a couple seconds, finally got it. She provides a much-needed bucket for the Sparks. Brian Adler calling her the X Factor when we talked to him before the game because of that ability to hit it face-up jumper. Moore can't answer. Rebound Parker. Parker running the floor. And the offense through traffic. Too much of it. And lost it as Minnesota just converged at the same time. Swarming. Maya Moore and Rebecca Bronson swarming defensively. Montgomery, the kick. Brunson. And a nice box out from Candice, but she overrated the rebound. And it stays here with Minnesota. Another hustle play for Maya Moore. Maya Moore came from the opposite side of the floor to go over and keep that basketball alive, Ryan. It keeps this crowd alive. You know, there's a lot of arenas that are loud. This is one of those places when it's rocking. You can feel it in your chest. Moore's turnaround is off. We've seen Maya Moore the last two games with so many different huge intangible plays. So used to just her scoring. 
And Brunson and Parker really got into it, and Brunson finally hit with a personal. That's her fourth, and the team's fourth. Rebecca Brunson is vital, and it's not just because of what she does on the offensive end, getting to the offensive boards, it's what she does defensively. Oh, that looked like Candace Parker pushes Brunson's arms up. Mm, close. Brunson had her. I think Brunson might have extended with the forearm. But those two have been jockeying all game. Sims got hit. Odyssey Sims has been at the line on this third quarter. We'll shoot two more. Let's check in with Holly. Williams Arena is sold out tonight. I've had my decibel meter out. The loudest it's gotten in here about 109. Uh, a, a diesel truck. It has been very loud. The thing I love about these fans here in Minnesota, even the obstructed view seats were sold. Behind the DJ booth, there are three seats that you can barely see the floor. Those are sold. That's how much fans want to be in this building to watch their wins tonight. Hey, well, Holly, we've seen these teams have a tough time hearing the horn at different moments. And we talked with Brian Agler as well as different members of the Sparks about how they were going to deal with the noise in here. And they said tight huddles, making use of dead balls. That's when you have to communicate and you have to communicate well. Are you going to ignore the fact that Holly Rowe has a decibel meter on her phone? What doesn't she have on her phone? <laughs> or, or in her bag of tricks. She is your real-life Mary Poppins. I'm just thankful she's on our team. You know what? I've seen her with my children, and that is true. <laughs> if there was ever a word to describe her, the Califragilistic FBI. <laughs> Fouls, hooked it up, and over two. She started that hook shot from her waist and still able to finish it over multiple defenders. Back to seven. Lavender a three. Missed it left. Rebound. Batted around into the arms of Corson. And another chance for LA. They've been able to stay around five, seven. Haven't been able to really cut it much closer. Carson can't either. And Beard, that's going to put LA over the limit and send more to the line for two. Sylvia Fowles has been a beast all season when she catches the ball in the paint and has defenders on her back. And you'll see her here. Lavender's there. An extra defender comes. She bobbles the ball a little bit, Ryan. Still collects it enough to finish inside. Sylvia Fowles has been terrific and consistent in these finals. And we're talking here to her today about Game five last year, and if there was anything she took from that game that she's thinking about in regard to this one, and she said rebounding. We didn't rebound the final two minutes of that game, and that is why we lost. She has certainly rebounded tonight, 14 of them to go with 10 points. As Moore now has 14 points to go with eight rebounds. Files talked about how it's so important for her to stay calm. Cheryl Reeves texted her the night before every game. Last night, the text simply said, stay calm. Gray on the drive, got around Perkins. Lavender connects. A player Brian Agler told us would have to have a big contribution off the bench for them to win this game. It's her game, picking and popping, picking and popping. Six points in eight minutes for Lavender. Val's got the position, and Beard could do nothing but that. That'll be number three, Elena Beard, and Sylvia Fowles will go to the strike for two. Normally in those situations, Sylvia Fowles would have to pass it back up top to get the angle. But look at how the weak side is cleared out. The other three Minnesota guards are around the perimeter. All of them are threats there. She had lots of space to catch and put it up. Minnesota 13 for 13 from the line in this game. And now 14 to 14. We told you before, but we'll tell you again. In the seven prior playoff games of this run, Minnesota has not shot better than 70% from the line in any of them. This is a team that shot it at 79% as a group during the year. And they finally missed one tonight. Just like a man. Tell you before and then tell you again. You got it. <laughs> Parker trying to use her size on Moore, went to the left hand. 
Beautiful. She has the advantage there. Minnesota, small lineup, so Maya Moore's got the defensive assignment on Parker. 16 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists for Candace Parker. Two for one opportunity for Minnesota is about to expire. Moore's jumper off, rebound Beard, and L.A. can hold for one. Ryan Adler trying to communicate that and finally was able to get the message over to Chelsea Gray. Minnesota is over the limit as Perkins hawks Gray. Shot clock turned off. Gray, the drive, the jumper, gets the roll. And the lead for Minnesota is down to four. 2.9 to go in the quarter. No fouls, no fouls, no fouls. Augustus will get it off. And that is how the third quarter will end. A title on the line. Will it be a repeat or will it be redemption? A four-point contest after three. The Stars. Fourth quarter keys to a win. I'm not going to say what I usually say, Holly. I love this answer. Okay, but we got to hold on to our lead. That's the key to it. Thank you. Cheryl Reed showing some humor in these tense moments of game five. LA starts the quarter. Kansas Parker on the bench. Gray with the shot clock fading. Couldn't hit. And fouls the rebound on her 15th. Files takes up so much space inside. Total spacing eater. It's one of the reasons she's able to collect so many boards. As tightly as this series has been played, there have been just four total ties and seven lead changes in the entire series, none of which have occurred tonight. Whalen connects! What a savvy bucket from the back! And a foul ball the other way against Elena Beers. And that'll be her fourth. Lindsay Whaley working so hard on this possession, fighting off Juana Williams, falling away. Ooh, she's made a few of those here in Williams Arena. Every member of the Minnesota starting lineup in double figures. Nice look from Augustus. And Sanders puts it in. Again, when the defensive assignment on fouls is Jantel Lavender, she's been able to get inside and bury her. Williams, a three, is good! First three of the game for L.A., who had missed their first ten, and it comes at a much-needed time. Five-point game. was able to fingertip it, and that is going to be a foul, and either way, it's number five on somebody. Beard or Agumake, and it's Agumake's fifth. going to the bench is important for a couple of reasons. One of the main ones, she is their best rebounder. Moore just caught LA sleeping on the inbound. Parker and Lavender were still communicating, and they were a step behind Maya Moore. Still talking about who has who. And now Sims throwing it over Parker's head as LA just unraveled on back-to-back -back possessions after that substitution. And now Candace Parker and Chelsea Gray both trying to calm down their group. Brian Adler will do so with a timeout. Brunson can't hit. Rebound L.A. on a solid defensive possession. From Sims. Gray will pull up. And hit. Smooth stroke from Chelsea Gray. This, this is the reason she told me told her team before the game that she was concerned about Chelsea Gray and her ability at her size to hit that pull-up jumper. Minnesota has led from the start of this game. Double comes. Whalen looks off the pass, sneaks inside, and bends it. Thirteen for the Minnesota native. Parker, a three, is good! Candace Parker had 
missed her first three from deep, but connects there, and it's a four-point contest. Screens to stay with fouls. Five to shoot. Sims came up with a steal. Wayland helps Sims. No call. Fouls. Scoops it in. Plus the foul. I believe a foul is called here. Great hustle. We've seen this throughout the course of the game. Not much contact at all here. Spin around. To me, that's incidental contact. And Candace Parker, rightfully upset. Also, Lindsey Whalen got away with rushing back Odyssey Sims on the loose ball. When she lost that ball, she cleared out Sims with her right hand to get back to it. What now, are they reviewing? I'm guessing they're going to review whether or not she got it off in time. And then, of course, you'd also determine whether or not the foul was before or after the shot clock. She definitely got it off. So that's all that matters. She gets it off, you've called the foul, so the foul stands. Right. If you're wondering, well, when they see there's no foul, can they overturn it? No, the officials cannot overturn that. So they're just making sure the foul occurred before the shot clock expired. But clearly, and obviously the ball was released in time, clearly both happened before the shot clock expires. And it is going to be a chance for an and one opportunity for Sylvia Fowles. And just because foul, uh, Parker had her hand on Fowles back, that doesn't mean it's a foul. You can have your hand on a player as long as you're not pushing them or displacing them. So I don't understand why foul was called there. They shop WNBAstore.com now to represent the LA Sparks and the Minnesota Lynx in the WNBA Finals. And be sure to visit either team for the clinching gear. Whoever wins the title, WNBAstore.com, one store every team. Clinching gear, that sounds painful. We still need to get the Hollywood bobblehead sold at the WNBA store. Still working on that. Would you buy clinching gear? I think you like your stuff loose fitting. Yeah, that's true. That sounds like it would be a little tight to the body. A three-point opportunity not completed as Parker able to corral the rebound, but did she step out of bounds? She did. And now Parker's going to say, hey, I'm getting jumped underneath. Is there more contact there, or, this, or less contact than when we saw Agumike get the foul on Maya Moore? L.A. probably has a gripe on this time down the floor. Augustus catches it in. Minnesota taking advantage of the opportunity. A four-point possession. Blink's lead. Carson closed on by Moore. Shot clock's at three. At two, Gray got it to go with the foul. A resuscitation bucket from Chelsea Gray. Good things are going to happen when you put Chelsea Gray and Candace Parker in a pick and roll situation because you have to help, and then the defense is in a mismatch situation, and Chelsea Gray finishing inside. And I don't know that there was any contact here. Maybe Brunson got Gray on top. But it's the same thing we saw on the other end with Parker and Fowles. Obviously Gotta... being called very tightly right now. Yes, and there you saw it called similarly right, both ways. And that is number five on Rebecca Brunson. She got it! So now they're going to go back to the monitor just to make sure this two got off in time before the shot clock expired. It was close. But it looked like Chelsea Gray did get it off in time. Our officials tonight, Sue Blau, Roy Gobayan, Byron Jarrett, Jeff Wooten is the alternate.
Okay, we'll get a chance to take a look at it one more time. It looks clear to me that the ball is out of Chelsea Gray's hands before the clock goes to zero, before the light on the backboard lights up, out of her hands. That's a good two. I mean, so similar to the shot on the other end with Sylvia Files and the final back hands. Chelsea Gray were held to just six points combined in the first half. They have 17 already in the second half. And that was the key Cheryl Reeve told her team just before the start of this game. LA has been running their offense through Chelsea Gray here in the fourth quarter. Oh! Number five on Brunson. As Gray tries to complete the three-point play. And does. Five on Beard, five on Agumake, five on Brunson with 5.45 to go in the fourth quarter of game five. A championship on the line. Parker went for the steal, deflected. Seven to shoot. Brunson will, and it's hit! Plus the foul! And if that's Agumake, that's her sixth! Minnesota is at their best when Rebecca Brunson is doing Rebecca Brunson-like things, and this is one of them. You got hit on the elbow. They're going to call that foul. She has been in an aggressive mindset. Game four here again in game five. There's not a lot, but that is absolutely the right call. You hit the elbow like that, it's a foul. And it's number six on Neko Gumake, who's so important to this L.A. team. How do the Sparks survive and try to overcome this deficit without her on the floor? They're going to continue to do what they've done, and that's involved Chelsea Gray and Candace Parker in pick and roll situations. Let Gray come off, make for decisions. Minnesota really hasn't had an answer for that lately. Brunson makes it an eight-point game, 13 points, seven rebounds for Rebecca Brunson. Here is Gray with that pick and roll with Parker. Gray can't hit that top. Wants it, gets it, dishes it. Eight to shoot, back to fouls. Finds Whalen, uppercut, foul. And Lindsey Whalen will shoot a pair. With a good K out of the game, the Sparks now have Parker on Sylvia Fowles. Jantel Lavender on the opposite side. When the ball goes into fouls, what's the number one rule, Ryan? You get a player cutting from the high side as soon as the double team comes. It comes from Sims, Whalen cuts. Good things happen. Lindsey Whalen, 13 points, eight assists, a chance to add to it. Hits the free throw. So often the question has been asked, when is the window going to close on these Minnesota veterans? Cheryl Reeves had to answer that question for three years. And it's Whalen, Brunson, and Augustus who are contributing huge tonight in support of Lauren Fowles. Whistle underneath that you couldn't even hear as Augustus and Parker got tied up. That'll be just the second team foul on Minnesota. L.A. is already over the limit with 4.46 to go. Talked about the Minnesota veterans. They sure are representing the AARP well. Oldest team in the league. Gray, a three. Off the mark, long board, out to Parker. Another chance for LA. Down 10. Gray needs help, finds it in seams. Five to shoot. Parker on the drive, lost it. Here, shot clock expires, and L.A. turns it over. When Candace Parker lost the ball, Maya Moore looked over at the official because it's so loud she didn't know if there was a, a foul called or not. Minnesota always has an incredible crowd. But Williams Arena adds even more juice to it. This place is rocking. As Gray comes up with a deflection, Sims in transition, held up by Whalen. And we will have another jump ball on an outstanding defensive play by Lindsey Whalen. Out 
Chelsea Sims thrives in open court situations. Whalen knows she's going left. Just the poke of the hand and able to save an easy two by Odyssey Sims. Lindsay Whalen, not the quickest player on the floor, but she has savvy and she has made some smart veteran plays here today. Now, it's Sims and Moore who will jump in, not Sims and Whalen. Advantage Minnesota. Parker kept it though. Denied up top by Fowles. We're back it out. Four minutes to go. Minnesota by 10. Five to shoot. Gray Will. Short. Rebound. Fowles for 16. The team defense has been outstanding. Brunson gets caught on the switch, so Foul says, all right, I got your back. I make sure I secure this defensive board. They're starting to sniff it here at Williams Arena. Parker the steal. L.A. won't go away. Parker accelerating. It is tripped up from behind by Moore. Third team foul on Minnesota, just the second on Maya Moore. Juana Williams going to hey, check hey, in for shoot. L.A. and come get shoot. Elena Beard. As Brian Agler searches for answers with Neko Gumbake having fouled out. Raquana Williams brings more offense and the ability to consistently hit three-point shots. Right now, Brian Agler needs offense to make up this 10-point deficit. Parker. Brunson playing with five fouls. Lavender along two is off. Rebound, Sylvia Fowles, her 17th, tying the finals record she set earlier this series. Augustus didn't get it over in time. And an eight-second violation against Minnesota. Come on! L.A. has the ability to turn up their defensive pressure. Minnesota needs to find their primary ball handle, Lindsey Whale, better get it over. Three straight turnovers for Minnesota. They have 16. L.A. has turned it over 17 times. Three minutes to go. Sims with space, leans in, couldn't finish. Almost like she sought the body instead of the bucket. Now Moore with some haste. And that is going to be a timeout from Cheryl Reeve in Minnesota. 2.49 to go. The Lynx leading by 10. Well, Sylvia Fowles told us before this series started, the emphasis she had was on rebounding after last year's finals. She has done so in this series, and she has done so tonight. 18 rebounds, a new finals record, topping the 17 she had earlier in this series just been gobbling them up. Seven of those rebounds are on the offensive end of the floor. Minnesota talked about it last year. They were one defensive rebound away from winning a championship. Instead, it was Neko Bumake's putback that won it for L.A. Now Minnesota's 242 away from their fourth title, leading by 10. Shot clock is at three. Augustus connects. Augustus has 14, Fowles has 15, 13 for Brunson, 16 for Moore, 15 for Raleigh. Gray kicks in the corner, Williams will take. It's a three, no. And the Lynx are two minutes away. A 7-0 Minnesota run. Fouls. The turn. Denied by Parker. L.A. seeking a little life. As time runs out on their season. Gray gives it up. Lavender puts it in. It's back to 10 with 1.31 to go. Go, 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 go. 
Here's a chance to take a look. Does she have the upward shooting motion now? Didn't look like she had gathered either. Easy side, out of bounds, ball. Parker, the kick. Williams is hit and will take three free throws as more under cover. Interesting, the last three possessions, it looked like LA is really trying to look for the three-point shot, even though they could go for easy two. They got the easy two last time with Lavender, but here, Maya Moore, she's still going towards Raquana Williams. Now, they can go to the monitor and make sure that her toe was behind the line here, but it doesn't look like they're going to. It was very close, but three free throws for Williams, who hits the first. And so L.A. still with a heartbeat. 56.9 to go. Hey, after we're done here, stick around for Sports Center at night with Butchie and Briscoe. They'll have a full breakdown of our game with post-game reaction. All the highlights from the NL wildcard game. Sports Center at night coming up next on ESPN, also streaming live on the ESPN app. And of course, we will also have the trophy presentation. Williams missed it intentionally and foul secures it. Timeout taken by Minnesota. I don't understand the rush that L.A. is in right now. The last few possessions looking for three-point shots, not looking for twos, and then to do that there, there's still 56 seconds left in this game. And so the attempt at the intentional miss not executed properly. Minnesota secures it. L.A. forfeits the point. And they lead by eight, the Lynx do, with 55.8 to go. And all series long, one of the trends we've seen, Rebecca, is the team that has gotten the clear and decisive edge from their starters has won the game. And a lot of times that's meant every starter in double figures. Tonight, that's what's happened for Minnesota. Yeah, Cheryl Rivas tightened her bench up even more, and we were wondering if that would lead to fatigue. And LA never able to take that lead. It made Minnesota exert the extra energy, so it has not impacted her team. Don't foul on this way right now. Don't foul right off the bat. Got it? How many timeouts? All right, we got two timeouts. If we get a steal, if we get a steal, we're going to no timeout. Let's make transition. Okay? So LA. Looking for a steal off the inbound from Minnesota. And you can see Candace Parker say to the officials, we are not trying to foul. And that's smart because a lot of times, because teams are trying to foul the situation, the official will be quicker with their whistle. Really savvy communication from Candace Parker. Now, can LA, who has forced 16 turnovers tonight, force a 17 and keep the heart beating? Higher crowd on its feet. Whalen trying to dribble out of the double. She lost it. Sims on the steal and Sims will lay it in. Six point game. 46 and a half seconds to go. Timeout, Minnesota. A 6 0 run from the Sparks. We've talked about Odyssey Sims and her ability to defend on the basketball. The double comes. Whalen tries to get around. Sims continues to move her feet. Whalen simply loses her balance. Great defense by the LA Sparks. Send the double team. Get Whalen off balance. And Sims finishing the other way. 
And a smart move from Candace Parker to make sure the officials knew we are not trying to foul. Even if it gives you just a little more leeway. Because if the official thinks you are trying to foul there, they'll be quicker to blow the whistle. And now LA is certainly not trying to foul. Down six, 46.5 to go. Minnesota one time out remaining. Here is Whalen. Doubled again. Trapped again. Passes out of it. Loose falls. Fouls able to wrestle it back. And she throws it away. Here's Sims. Sims on the drive. Lays it up. And in. Plus the foul. A remarkable turn of events. As this fourth and this championship winds to a close. Once again, just the ferocity of the L.A. defense on the side, out of bounds. Sims coming the other way, plenty of contact, finishing to her strong side. An 8-0 run that has taken place in 57 seconds. This is a one-possession game. A 9-0 L.A. sprint. Minnesota spends its final timeout. Let's listen in to Cheryl Reed now. You heard Brian Agro asking his team, do you want to foul or do you want to go again? Do you want to play defense? And you heard them all saying back, let's go again. They are feeding off of their defensive fire right now. Both teams over the limit. L.A. with two timeouts, Minnesota with none. Meaning Maya Moore has to get this in. Her team leading by three. Moore bounces it. Augustus has to save it and does. Now fouls his trap. Here is Moore. L.A. can play it straight up. Moore connects. Possession lead for Minnesota. And what a play by Simone Augustus to save this as it looked like Minnesota was going to turn it over again. LA did their job. They got in a frantic defensive possession. Maya Moore had plenty of time, but. Ooh, when you have a player like Maya Moore who can create, even when off balance, even when your team is in hectic scramble mode, pushes it to a five-point lead. L.A. uses a timeout. They have one remaining. Now, if you're the Sparks, you're down five. Are you looking for a quick two or are you going to three? I think either way. I think you're looking again to get Candace Parker and Chelsea Gray involved in some kind of screening action. They've been so efficient, the two of them together. Odyssey Sims also capable three-point shooter. Well, Sims not in right, but yeah, she is in. She's a capable three-point shooter, but I look for Chelsea Gray and Candace Parker. LA is two of 15 from three in this game. They have to get it in bounds. Sims three, no good. She is fouled. Rebound number 20 for Sylvia. Minnesota also knowing that L.A. wants to get the ball into Gray or Parker. Great job denying those two. Sims very capable from hitting, for hitting that three-point shot, but can't get it to go. And fitting that it comes to a defensive rebound for Sylvia Fouts. You knew with these two teams, neither would ever go quietly. A torrid 9-0 run from L.A. made this a one-possession game. But a huge bucket from Moore, and now fouls at the line with Minnesota up six. And now seven. L.A. will not use its final timeout. They're looking for a three on this possession. Gray stops. Delivers. Parker can't hit. Rebound Brunson. Ahead to Fouts. Parker will hit Whalen with 8.3 to go.
Many wondered, was last year the final gasp for this Minnesota core? But they are 8.3 seconds away from an emphatic not yet. Minnesota with four of the five oldest players in this league are about to add their fourth championship in the last seven years to the trophy case. All of Williams Arena on its feet.